Hello guys, today I will talk about how to improve your spe English speaking skill. But you have to remember that I'm not an English teacher or a linguist. So what I'm sharing with you guys right now is not written in any book or in an official website. It's just my own experience after living and studying abroad. I really want to share with you guys, especially for beginning English learner, to improve your speaking skill if you think it's helpful and reasonable, just go for it. But if you think it's ridiculous, just forget it, okay? So in order to speak uh, English well, you need to know four elements. The first thing is pronunciation. The second is grammar and vocabulary. The third thing is accent. And the last one is natural. I will go through them one by one. Okay, the first thing is pronunciation. It's obvious that in order to let people understand you, you need to pronounce every word correctly. And to do that is easy. You just need to study IPA. IPA is International Phonetics Alphabet. So it's like a sound system that helps you to pronounce every sound in every language. And to, to study that, just go Google search or YouTube search IPA pronunciation tutorial or practice. There's a tons of websites and people on YouTube, they teach about ITA, IPA, and you should learn it from a native speaker um, so they can show you the, more, the correct way to pronounce every single sound thing in that. Okay, so after mastering IPA, um, the next thing is look up every word in dictionary. So basically, theoretically, uh, if you can learn IPA, you can pronounce every single word correctly when you look it up in dictionary. And I will recommend uh, you guys to use um, Longman Dictionary online because it's different from other dictionary just only show uh, the pronunciation of the word that you look up. But Longman Dictionary will show uh, will say all the example sentences. So basically, it's like Google Translate. When you copy a sentence or a paragraph in Google Translate, they will say it all for you. So it's the same thing. Longman Dictionary will say out loud the uh, example sentence. I think it's really helpful because some people they can recognize a word when it stands alone. But when the word stand in a sentence or in a paragraph, it's really difficult to recognize it. So you need to practice to practice listening to the sentence, I'm sorry, to the word, not only when it stand alone, but when it go in the sentence. Because sometimes there will be straight difference uh, when it go in the con in different contexts or things like that. So it's helpful to know how the word plays in a sentence. Okay, and another thing that you need to practice things and public things, what you practice. Because a lot of people, they don't have the habit of using dictionary, especially the people have very good vocabulary. Uh, like, for example, like myself, I, I it doesn't mean that I have very good vocabularies. Um, it's just because I have been here for five years and honestly, I didn't use dictionary anymore because after studying GRE, my vocabulary is pretty good. So I can like read, uh, I can reading books or reading materials or doing my studying and working. I almost don't need dictionary. And because of that, my pronunciation is really going down. Um, it sounds really fun, but that's true. Even like when I was studying uh, English to prepare for the uh, test, I look, I look up every single word in dictionary, but now I didn't. And some of the words that I pronounce incorrect, but I didn't know that until someone correct me. I have a friend. Uh, he's a he's a native speaker. He was born in the United States, so definitely he's a native speaker. But he pronounced the word vehicle as vehicular. He said like ve vehicular. I don't know why. Maybe because his mom is um, an immigrant. But no one correct him, so he said the, that word vehicular for more than twenty years. Um, and obviously. 
uh, the native speaker almost never correct the others, um, especially other native speaker, right? So he didn't know that he said that word incorrect. Yeah, so I did the same thing. There's a lot of word that I use this every day and I pronounce it incorrect, but I didn't recognize that. And recent, recently, I really want to improve my English and I start practicing again. What I'm doing right now is every day I select few pages in the book that I'm reading and make a video, record my reading and publish it on a Facebook group that I created. So people, when they listen to my reading, they will comment what um, uh, what I pronounce incorrect so it's really helped me to recognize my mistake and correct it okay and the second thing is grammar and vocabulary there is no way more effective to learn grammar and vocabulary than writing because in writing you will have time to really think about the grammar structure and select the best word to use in that context because when you speak, normally you just pick the first things appearing in your mind to deliver your message to help people to understand you. You won't have time to very picky in grammar structure or select the words or uh, think which one is better. You just select the first things. So if you really want to improve your grammar, and the vocabulary, just practice writing. You can practice writing by writing a blog, uh, writing a book. Oh, it sounds very fancy, but okay. You just like make a comments on the internet in um, maybe the English group or things like that. Or, but that is the only way to help you to improve because like most of the people, they may understand like 20,000 words, but the words that they can use like come uh, frequently is only like 5,000 words because in order to understand a word and bring that word to your own words is really take times so you need to see the words like um, very frequent that's your ability to use that word as your own language and practice writing and reading I mean, I mean like reading books is really help to improve your vocabulary because the more you see a word the more familiar the word will be, right? And you will have ability to use that. So when you write or when you speak, that word will appear in your mind that you don't need to look it up, right? Yep, so practicing writing and reading will improve your grammar and vocabulary. And in grammars, you don't need to have anything fancy. Only grammar in news book will be enough for you, or maybe grammar in advance. Thing like that and at the same time use dictionary like whenever you look up a word just not only seeing only the meaning of the word but see the extension of phrasal verb uh, preposition uh, pre preposition preposition oh that is the word that I forgot how to pronounce it whatever uh, just look look up everything in the dictionary related to the word so it will help you to know how the word will be used and helps you to improve your grammar and vocabulary for sure. Okay, the first one is accent. Uh, for me, accent is not important. I think it's like identity because even in Vietnamese, South Vietnamese people will speak different than North Vietnamese people, right? So every location, they may have their own accent. So the same, even in the United States, they will have like about five or six totally different accent. The East Coast will speak different than uh, the West Coast and the Midwest. So the same, everywhere, everywhere they will have their own accent. So really, like it's just like personal preference. If you want or if you like an essence, you just learn it. And the way the learn is, everyone knows, you just listen to that essence uh, as much as possible. Like listen to TV show, listen to uh, movies, watching movies, TV show, it's really hard to learn the essence. And the best way is living in that uh, cultural living in that location for a long time, speaking with the native speaker there. So then you can, through times, you can learn the essence. But I don't see that it's a big problem in English speaking because Really, you just need to pronounce every word good, speak it naturally, and people can understand you 
it's fine. You don't need to have the same accent. Like a native speaker is not important. It's just like your preference. If you really like to do that, you can do that. But for me, it's not important. I have been uh, in the United States for five years, where I live in Vietnam almost 25 years. So it really makes sense if I still have Vietnamese accent in English. And it's not it's not something that I need to be ashamed of, right? Yep, and, but, well, if you want to learn it, just watch a lot of TV show and movies, and when you watch it, just try to repeat what people said, and through times, you will have their accents. It's not too difficult, it's just not important. The last one, I think the most important, is the naturally. The natural, the natural, okay. Uh, it's quite complicated and I just make up this term. I just make it up, okay. So naturally it's about reflexibility, emotion, and confidence. What is reflexibility? It means that you can reflex to the language. Uh, you can speak that language at the same speed of your thought. So basically, whenever you thought something, you, if you can speak out loud in your mother tongue, you can do the same in English. So I will evaluate a person can speak English as a native speaker if they have ability to use English like their own language. So use it at the same times uh, of their thought. Even though they have limited in vocabulary, but it's fine. Like even in their own language, you you may forget some words. You speak in Vietnamese, but you uh, at that moment you couldn't remember a word, or you speak in incorrect grammar or something. It's happened. Even you are a native speaker, right? So it doesn't matter if you speak English with a little bit mistake. You forgot some vocabulary. It's fine, but. If your reflexibility is still fine and as fast as your own language, I will evaluate that person is a native speaker. So, and also, it's about your response. Uh, so when you speak with someone, or if you, or you, if you are doing something and you listen to English um, in a TV show, a news, or someone speaking English, when you concentrating on doing something, so you still recognize and can and have ability to respond to it. So it means that your reflexibility is very good, and you can tell that you are a native speaker, right? The second is the emotion. I think it's very important because, like, especially if you are a public speaker, uh, presenter, like if you do a presentation. A long presentation. If if you can speak English very emotional, like your own language, and deliver the message, not only the message but about the, your emotion um, in the issues that you are talking, so you already success, right? And it's very difficult, even for the native speaker, because I I met a lot of people um, in my English class. Uh, she's a native speaker, but she speak her voice um her speak i don't i don't know how to describe to you but it's really boring i mean like the tone is just equal like this it doesn't sound interesting at all the emotion is very blank thing like that so i think to speak it emotionally Knowledge is very difficult, and if you have ability to do that, you can be confident and proud of yourself that you speak English very good. And of course, the last one is the confidence. Confident that means you feel comfortable to speak and use English. Um, so it's like something that you need to improve by practicing. And as I say, practicing, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Even the native speaker can make mistake, and don't judge yourself. Don't compare yourself with the others, because you can see it's like a lot of people, YouTuber, uh, English teacher, or, or a international student, 
or whatever, they post a video speaking in English online, but you may not know that they already have the script, they practice that speech a lot of times, or they do like editing videos or whatever, or you don't know like how hard they try, how many, how many years they have lived in a foreign country, thing like that. So don't compare yourself with the others, right? And don't afraid of being, of having mistake because just only recognize your mistake, confront with your mistake, and feel confidence in yourself it will help you to speak English better. And my another tip that I suggest here is when you listen to something, try to do like repeating at the same time. That is, I'm not sure that is a tip or not, but it's the activity that I'm doing right now to practice things, my, my emotional and my reflexibility. So what I'm doing basically like this, I listen to the news, uh, I don't need to, to care about what they are saying, I don't need to, to care like, to understand it. I just listen to it, recognize the sounds, and then I repeat it at the same time, the same speed as they speak. Um, you can see another video on my YouTube channel, I did it as a, an example. By doing that, I will force my brain to receive all the sound and uh, put the sound through my mouth at the same time, so I go from the ear to the mouth in order to practice my tongue muscle and my ear. It sounds really strange like well, but do you know that language skill is not only depends on your brain, but also in your tongue muscle? Uh, it's like some children, they have ability to speak earlier than the others because their muscles, the, their tongue muscles develop sooner than the others. So it's allowed them to make very complex movement so they can pronounce a sound, um, a word easier, easier than the others. So in order to practice speaking English, you need to practice more so your tongue will be stronger, faster, and ha have ability to do more complex movement. It's basically like that because like Vietnamese is have totally different movement than English. So it's the same thing. You need to practice more. It doesn't matter that if you speak something doesn't have any meaning, you speak it incorrect, a thing like that, but it, you just need to practice your tongue with that movement. So that is why I doing that activities like listening and repeating at the same time. It's just to force my tongue to be familiar and to read it, practice it, to make it smoother, more flexible. That's it. And my last advice is just before speaking English, use, oh, I'm sorry, like before learning English, you just need to know what is your purpose of speaking English. Like some English teacher, they need to speak very correct in grammar and vocabulary, right? Because they are the example, they are the standard, so they, they don't allow themselves to have mistake. So it may like take more time for them to prepare for the speak. But for most of people, the main purpose is just communication. So as long as people can understand you, you are fine. Yeah. And the way I do, I can just like make a video like this, post this on YouTube, and open the uh, auto-generated subtitle. You know, like YouTube has the tool, that tool. So when you make the videos and open that subtitle, if YouTube can understand like eighty percent of your speak, so you're fine. I don't think you have you won't have any problems in communication with native speaker. And you know, like auto generated can be edited. So even when you listen to someone and some English speaker, they make a YouTube online and you open their auto-generated subtitles, you see like they say correct every single word. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that they really said every single word correctly. They might edit that auto-generated. So let's say don't judge yourself and don't compare yourself with the others. Okay. I'm so sorry if this speak I have a lot of mistake in grammar and pronunciation or whatever. I'm so sorry. What I'm doing right now is just try to encourage you guys and hopefully 
uh, you will feel more confident to speak English when you're comparing with myself that I speak pretty bad. Okay, I just say don't compare yourself because I have been living in the United States for five years, so definitely I feel more confident than you than some of you. Okay, so it's fine now. Try, 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 and practice. See you guys next time. Bye bye.